Well, Ryan, it's that time again. Time for another episode of Beckner and Lipscomb at the Movies. I have been trying to figure out which episode number this is. I think it's like 13. There's just there's so many waves of these coming in that we've been doing. People just washed right out of your just memory? washed right out of my memory. It's almost as if your brain has been flooded. Flooded, and I'm starving for oxygen. That's a pretty good introduction to the film that we're going to be going, doing today. It's getting a little out of our comfort zone, and in this film a lot of people are made uncomfortable. It's called The Wave. It's a foreign film, and uh, before we get too much into it, let's show the trailer, because it's that time. Dim the lights, fire the camera, roll trailer. Vi snakker om en 80 meter høy bølge her. Etter 10 minutter, så finnes det ikke geiranger lenger. Cinema. It is the greatest, most challenging frontier in all of the arts. The intersection of creativity, philosophy, life, and the storytelling thereof, it presents to the filmmaker the greatest of challenges. A failure in any of these contexts means a failure in the film. But with the perfect execution of all, you have a timeless masterpiece. said this is a foreign film something that we haven't done before here scandinavian roots uh there have been some quality stuff come out of scandinavia uh in terms of things that i have seen more mostly indie stuff which i guess you could consider this film almost an indie picture but it was released by Mag by magnolia pictures which I, th which I thought was really interesting i'm not sure if that was part of an original development plan or if that was after the movie had already been produced and they're just a distributing company on that because magnolia has been a pretty well-known company for a long time and for them to have gotten their hands on something like this I thought was pretty interesting because this film was really under the radar for a very long time right um, could I be more sorry could he be more sorry we have introduced a sorry button because we have subjected uh, our audience to too many us uh, and you knows and so to enforce discipline we have actually incorporated this button, and so we're free to hit this at any time if we, uh... Sorry! Say, uh... Sorry! 
And we actually have a whole blooper reel where we spend about 30 minutes. Yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll be hit like 100 times. It'll be great. But yeah, that'll be great we are stuff. aspiring to excellence because we want to be the best that we can be, right? Uh, uh, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But anyway, this film is a natural disaster film. Uh, it's based on potentially Sorry. true events. Concept is we have a... It, we have a, is it a fault line? Where they are? The the geology is that this movie takes place within, I believe it's Scandinavia. It is, yeah. And, and uh, I'm so sorry. That region is known for these beautiful lakes, these beautiful idyllic lakes that are situated, literally wedged between huge mountains that literally go straight up almost into the sky, as it were. Right. With these beautiful mountain towns nestled deep in the valley. The town where this movie takes place is one such town. Now, historically, over time, within the last hundred years or so, numerous which in turn inundates this is actually what people have have been killed this film features one such town that is under a threat from a crevice that uh, and there's a there's the name of it I can't I can't really pronounce very well but it has opened up and it's it's a place where the mountain is literally starting to cleave and slowly break apart. And they have teams of scientists, and this is featured in the film, mm -hmm. that are their, their 24 hour goal is to monitor this crevice. And they measure how big it's getting. And I think in real life, this crevice is expanding at like two to three centimeters a year or something like that. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. They monitor the progression of that and any kind of. Anytime the mountain talks, as it were, any kind of yeah. earthquakes, any kind of seismic activity, and there's an alarm that they hit, and once they hit that alarm, that uh, that means that the uh, crevice has ruptured, and that part of that mountain, hundreds of thousands of tons of rock, have, is is falling or has fallen into that into that lake, and there is a wave, you know, hundreds of feet high, 10, 10 20, 30 meters or so that is on its way and in the movie and I think in real life they estimate 10 minutes before that town is essentially destroyed right and yeah. so the people are basically under a 24 hour 24 hour 7 day a week alarm system where they constantly have to listen for these sirens to go off and if they hear them they have 10 minutes to get out right and that's the, that's the in recent years A lot of disaster films that we've been treated to in the last years, they tend to be very exaggerated. Mm -hmm. uh, 2012 comes to mind. <laughs> hey, you San think 2012 Andreas, was it was it over exaggerated? <laughs> oh man, it could happen. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, actually 100% accurate. I thought. I thought 2012 I, I, was. I think I mentioned this in passing somewhere, but when I, I held I had held off for a long time to buy a really nice television, and when I bought my first 55 inch. LCD high res from a pawn shop that I thought you know I, I need to get a good film that will actually show this 2012 on and that's and that's for better or for worse that's what I that's what I chose and I think I'd actually watched Jumanji was the first film I think I actually watched on it and that was when I really realized the huge difference you know we joke about watching Star Trek right on yeah. Blu-ray now and seeing, whereas when those films, when those episodes came out in the '60s, they were on a little screen like this, black and white, and you couldn't tell that there was a stunt actor who was the guy who was right, yeah. filling in for Captain Kirk when he was wrestling the bad guy, and it's painful to watch now right. Blu-ray on a projector like like I do to see this guy is obviously a stunt double, and right. it's so clear you feel like you're watching Buck Rogers with the Seeing the actual lines holding up. 
that said, it was a very good film. 2012 was to watch on that. Jumanji, which they're remaking, interestingly enough, I, they really changed the plot on that. I'm not sure if I feel how I feel about that. But I sort of understand how they did how they had to do it to make the plot work that they went with. Classic movie does not look so good on the big screen because right. the effects that that they had at the time was in the standard digital realm, and so it you can definitely see the makeup on the actors and everything, and the the special effects don't hold up very well because they weren't they weren't special. Generate, they weren't that <laughs> special. They weren't done at the high enough resolution to really show. 2012, however, though, is a, is, a, is awesome and amazing in its special effects. Not so much in the actual credibility of what, what could happen now. Mother Earth constantly surprises us. And there are, within historical record, perhaps not within the record of humanity, but within what we refer to as deep geological time, that which we study and know through science, through the various techniques and uh, anal an analyzations that our esteemed colleagues do in the science realm. That said, 2012 was a great film in terms of the special effects. Jumanji, not so much, because you could definitely tell the makeup on the artists and the special effects were not done for high 1080p, but more like 720. So at 1080, you've seen the, you've seen the one with the hot dog at, at Standard definition, you see the hot dog, and then at seven, and then at ten eighty p, it's like a hot dog dancing around. Oh, you see, no, have you seen that, that meme? Okay. It's usually pretty crass, but uh, anyway, the uh, the issue was I went and bought this 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 disaster epic, and the special effects were amazing to see it on that on that big screen that I had just gotten. This film as well has those I think has the same degree. It is, however, has the effects, but it's also more plausible. I also thought it had a better story development than other disaster films that I've seen. You know, I think in most instances we get a cheap sob story situation, usually a divorced parent right. of some kind, you know, or whatever. Right. Whereas this film, the, it, it does a good job of blending the scientific aspect, the story aspect, as one on its way to the event that's taking place. Right. I'm glad you brought that up because really with the disaster epic, you have three things that I look to kind of grade them on. Number one is the is the plausibility. Could this really happen? Obviously, 2012 is sort of complete fantasy and fabrication that this that such a thing could happen on this level. The second thing is the uh, the quality of the special effects, and the third thing would be the actual acting itself. Um, I apologize. A film that stands out at covering at least one of those, the plausibility, is a film called Yellowstone that actually is very uh, plausible. I don't know if you, if there's all kinds of conspiracy theorist websites out there that Yellowstone is always about to erupt. And were it to erupt, uh, though it... I'm so sorry. Were it to erupt, there is a, there is a straight up legitimate potential that it could literally wipe out the entire half of the United States. And it has done that within, as I refer to, deep geological time, not within our recorded history. But it will, it will happen again. This film, Yellowstone, explores that potential. Now, the special effects are not very well done. Neither is the acting, but the story is plausible. With, uh, with 2012, you have amazing effects, not so much good acting, nor not so much plausibility. Yeah, John Cusack could not save the world. John Cusack could not <laughs> save the world. With this film, you have the plausibility. It has happened before. It's going to happen again. You have good acting, and the special effects, I believe, are pretty are pretty good. I thought they were phenomenal. I thought they were better than 2012, honestly. I mean, 2012 was a different j time frame, I want to use, you know, in terms of the special effects advancements. I think, um, you know, maybe maybe not to most people, but I pay a lot of, like, especially if I'm going to watch a film like this, I'm going to pay extra, a little extra attention to things like that, because I think that that is the selling point of films like this, uh, n not necessarily for intellectuals, but for the general public, and, you know, that's one thing. All right, you good? The cat That's approves of the film yeah, as well. Yeah. Just, oh, look at that. Really approves of it.
<laughs> so what? But yeah, for this film, I thought they were actually better special effects for twenty than 2012. Uh, I pay a lot, a lot of really close attention to those sort of things when I'm watching a movie like this because I think that's a big selling point for these kind of films. Not necessarily for the intellectual person, but for uh, the general public more so. I, I appreciate what you're saying with the plausibility and things like that. I, I completely agree with those things as well. That was a big hindrance for me for 2012. I thought 2012 was garbage. Uh, for me, uh, there have not been that many natural disaster films that I've really liked. That I've not seen that Yellowstone one that you brought up there. Uh, you could actually watch Deep the... Impact was another one that yeah, I thought was yeah. total shit. Yeah, you can watch. Uh, you can watch Yellowstone. It's actually it's actually British, I believe. I believe it was put together by a British production company. The acting is not intolerable, but as you watch more and more movies, you you realize that there's this magic that takes place, and you wonder if the people who are filming it can feel it, or maybe they think that they feel it, but it when it actually comes together on the editing floor, or on the editing bench, as it were. Or a computer, as or a it computer probably is now. As, yeah. as it is now. You realize that there's there's a, there's something about a film that just has that, that pow to it. Right. And it was not there with Yellowstone. But you can you can look up on and play on and on YouTube uh, a low-res version. I don't know if I've really been able to find a high-res. I didn't actually check... Um, streaming service Netflix. I, I didn't actually check Netflix to see if it's actually on there I watched it I think on YouTube that said the uh, the essence of this film I think features prominently a, a great deal of drama but as you mentioned usually the drama of these disaster epics is usually centered around like a broken family or somebody who's going through a divorce yeah which is a and cheap, excuse me, a, a cheap cop out, in my opinion. It's it's very hard to do that, in my <clears throat> opinion. I I do agree with you. What it's just the, like an easy scapegoat, you know, to 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 use something like that. Uh, so yeah, I I agree with you that the family issue is sort of a cop out on a lot of these films. That is the is, that is either something that works really well as a, as a central focus, like the film The Abyss with Ed Harris, uh, directed by James Cameron, where he's trapped down there with his ex-wife. In that film, that's an excellent essence of that plot. Right, yeah. yeah. But they sometimes seem to rely back upon that. Well, it's just a cheap distraction, isn't it, really, at in, its core? I mean, that's what it, that's all it's trying to do, is it's just trying to entertain you long enough to, to make the length of the film carry over to right. it. You know, it's, it's a good time transition as well. I mean, I understand from, like, a marketing or, you know, directing standpoint why it would be sort of a good thing, but, I mean, like, it is in every damn movie like this. Right. Deep Impact's got it. You know, there's always... F- 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 Mageddon had it. You know, I it, it's the same the same sort of like jumbled situation, right? Just to get you sidetracked from you know. I, I just I don't like the fact that that is. Oh, I mean, it's like every single one of these movies. If you were to go see a natural disaster movie, it's in there. You know, it's always you can always guarantee it's in there. You know, and that's one reason I'm not particularly fond of this genre myself. But I feel like it's just over and overdone, and overdone, and overdone. But I can definitely, I can definitely see that. That was one, something that was that I welcomed in seeing in this film is that it, it shows a very strong family. And, yeah, and, was, yeah. And part of this is that they are separated and and yeah, potentially yeah. Um, hurt. Sorry. And part of the film is that they're they're separated, and potentially hurt by this event. Another aspect, not just the the reality of showing the intense love of this family in an authentic way. One of the things that I noticed was that in a lot of these films, a lot of films that we that we're being offered, they feature so much eye candy. Everybody is like really hot, you know, the the women are just gorgeous, look like they walked off of a cosmopolitan cover. In this film, the <laughs> that would be the reference you would use a cosmopolitan <laughs> cover which should be vogue it would be vogue more playboy 
What what was the the, the teen magazine that recently had an article that's causing a lot of uproar because they had a whole article on on anal sex, like the dudes and dose of anal sex. Yeah, and this is like a mainstream. I think it's like Teen Vogue. It's got a lot of a lot of parents really upset. Wow. But um, it was Cosmopolitan. A lot of parents saying, "Hey, this is absolutely inaccurate." <laughs> no, no, this no. is this, not. <laughs> this is true. This is false. This is the way you do. Uh, we probably need to edit, edit, that, edit that. So Cosmo, so Cosmopolitan. What do you, what you read? Playboy, Vogue. Man. You read Vogue. Playboy. I'm only Playboy. I sometimes joke. How uncomfortable that... Matthew got there. <laughs> so I don't know whether or not I can I, edit that. I, I sometimes joke that I uh, have a subscription for the for the articles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. You did read. You did hear where they where they said that they were not going to publish any more nudity for a while, right? Or really? They, they said wow. that. Yeah, they went through this thing because they said that so much, so many other people are doing it now, whereas they were the forerunners of that, that they were only going to pursue serious journalism. And try not to say, uh, they were only going to preserve, they were only going to pursue serious journalism. I think that they have rescinded that and they've gone back to yeah. you know, posting the nudie pics. So that you can get your titillation as you're right. also stimulating your mind with these deep right. conversational topics. But, you know, so much of, of, of uh, going into a commentary here, but it does seem like so much of our popular culture is about image and about the visual and lacks some degree of substance. Now I say that because in this film, one of the things that I noticed was these actors that have been chosen look like normal people to me. Right, yeah. They I are not eye candy. Uh, hey, my bad. They are not eye candy. The woman in this film, the mother, she is a tall... Seven. A seven. She's a seven. Seven. It's fair. We're going to do the... the we can do the the Universal Hot Crazy Matrix as right, well. Right, yeah. yeah. She, was, she was a seven. <laughs> she was a seven. She was worth going to look for. You know, she was like he did in the in the film. So, uh, are we gonna pursue this line of, of thought? So she's 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 really pretty, but not so pretty that it's gonna be a distraction to all your friends, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, okay. it's, yeah. It's 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 enough to where you don't have to worry about her cheating on you with her with your friends. It's not that that it's not in that uncomfortability. Because if your wife was a ten, you'd just be constantly be right. Like, yeah. All right, I could I could go with that that she was a seven, and of course it's all relative, right? She's all she you know she's all your wife will always be a perfect ten to you, right? Right, right. yeah, right. always. So, so we're right. just we're speaking very abstractly here, trying not, not inaccurately, inac- inaccurately, inaccurate, inaccurately. The point being, by my use of seven, is that she is not really ugly, but she's not. The eye candy that we typically see in a lot of films today, and I appreciated that. Uh, Sorry. And I appreciated that because, to me, it took the focus off of how sexy she is, and you know how she's performing in this film, and it put the emphasis more on the what versus the who. You see her as a mother. You see the affection between her and this guy who himself is not really eye candy. He's just a good man. Right. He's working hard. And it, it, to me, it's better because I'm going to see this film to see people in a potentially real context up against extraordinary odds and formidable circumstance. Mm Mm-hmm. And if I wanted to see eye candy dance around, you know, boulders, I'd go watch 2012, right? Right, yeah. And that's it's not that's not what this film is. It may very well be the best disaster epic that you've never heard of, which I think is a disaster in itself on some some level. This film, as I understand, was actually submitted by the film studio that created it to the. Uh, I'd like to take a brief moment to offer my apologies. This film was actually, as I understand it, submitted to the Oscar category for Best Foreign Language Film. It was not nominated, but that was their intent. So they they put a lot of time and energy and effort into making this film. And I think it sh- I think it stands up. 
Yeah, I do, I do as well. I'm surprised it actually didn't. I would like to have seen the films that were in that category does, for that it year. Does, it does make me curious. The, the effects are there. The quality of the script is there. And we, we've actually been doing a... We've been trying to add this to our movie reviews. We've got five aspects here that we do. Uh, pace, dialogue quality, visual quality, unique to, uniqueness, and acting skill. The pace, I felt, was, was very good. Um, yeah, I thought that was one of the, the, the most impressive things about this film is... Oh, excuse me. Uh, and a lot of, like we said, in a lot of these films, you know, you have... Sorry! You have a buildup of some kind leading up to the Sentinel event that we right. have as the major, uh, major, major point in the film... This film's build up was This film's build up was different in the sense that it was not rushed, it was not cheap, it was authentic and it was necessary, I think, to make this film have the level of merit that it does or that it's asking to have. Right. Unlike, you know, the films we mentioned earlier, uh 2012 and whatnot. Sorry. You know, 2012 and other films similar to that. It doesn't have that cheap let's rush this through, right. give you just a little something to go on, because we're just going to blow you away with all these crazy special effects. That's not what this film was at all. It was appropriately planned, appropriately timed, and it fit very well for what they were trying to do. Yeah, part of the plot is that this uh, person, this the, the gentleman, he's accepted a job in the big city as, I think, a petroleum engineer. So he's taking his expertise and working seismology and geology mm -hmm. to go, I guess, help find oil, as would be the revenue for a lot of these type of individuals. Right, yeah. And so we're set up with this backdrop of this family being uprooted and going to a different... That shit out as, of here. As this falls here. The, uh, the rock that was going to fall into the <laughs> lake is very similar to... <laughs> So pace is good with the film. I I, I enjoyed good. that. Watching Baby Driver recently, uh, that film. Sorry. Watching Baby Driver, we may do a review on that. There was a little bit of a lag. I felt I felt like in part in part of the film because you have all this really, and that's that's one of the challenges of a film that has all this high intensity scenes mm -hmm. of, of of car chases and escapes to then jump back to a more slower part and that's not always well done felt like it was a uh, baby driver was a little herky jerky i didn't get that feeling in this film uh, well i think this film moves at a constant pace the whole entire time is that i think what you're saying? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah 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 it's, it's good it moves at a very good steady pace yeah. the whole entire film yeah. yeah second aspect is dialogue quality now i have to warn you this film is in subtitles so if you just have some huge there is a version to english that, alternate on netflix though if you want to do that and don't want it with the subtitles. We would not recommend that. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> I I just... Somehow I knew that you were going to do that. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> Drop the bombs. <laughs> <laughs> love, love Godzilla. Yeah. Love, kill Godzilla. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very, very... I've watched very few films, honestly. And it's... Honest, honestly, it's... To me, it's usually more of a distraction to see something dubbed because I that's uh, the quality of dialogue to me is an intent is an intense part of the film to use an example of this the movie uh, let let the right one in that film another Scandinavian film mm, is it is well, it Scandinavian I think, it's, I think it's Russian. No. Let the Right One In is also... I, I haven't looked up to see what the different studios are. Because I'm you, Googling that right you're now. You're Googling that right yeah. now? Okay. I'm, 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 I'm throwing the red flag down. I'm going to challenge I you on believe, this one. I believe that that is a, a Scandinavian film. I'm not sure if it's the same... I'm not sure if it's the same studio that did this one. But there's been a lot of good films that have come out of the Scandinavian uh, cinemagraphic realm, as it were. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, also, and all of those films. Like those films. Um, I'm so sorry. 
The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, as you know, was remade. The, at least the first one was. I don't think it. I don't think it uh, was given the same reception as the initial Swedish. Swedish. That's, that's Scandinavian. Is it not? Sweden, well, let's find Denmark, out ex- Finland. Exactly what Scandinavia is, includes. Pretty sure it doesn't. But. Well, I did get a C in geography. So. Oh, it is. You're so right. That's embarrassing. <laughs> wow. I need to brush up on my geography there. Jeez. <laughs> Christ, how embarrassing that is. All right. Anyway, let me go kill myself here. So, again, the let the right one. So, in. it's a f- Scandinavian film. <laughs> Let the Right One In is a is is a very unique vampire film. Some people would argue probably the best, one of the best vampire films. I would con- I it, would throw it up there as one of it, the best. It, yeah, it's up there. If you haven't seen it, now a part of that next film, to Blade, of course, which is probably the one. I'm kidding. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> we just. We just lost a thousand. I know. If I'm we just, had I'm a just, thousand, I'm just YouTube, kidding. I'm just if, kidding. If we had a thousand YouTube, they'd just like it unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Dracula 2000 was the best. I mean. <laughs> that film, the essence of the vocal quality is a part of the film. Oh yeah, it has the it. dynamics of it. And when these when these studios or whoever does these these voiceovers, <laughs> I don't think that the director is there observing the quality of it. I've I've seen films that were just terrible. Oh yeah. In terms of the voiceover, it was just two actors in a room, you know, talking into a into a, a microphone, and they're about as excited. It's a, it's about as exciting to listen to their dialogue. Oh look, there's a giant mountain falling into the water, and there's right, a yeah. big wave coming. We that, better we better run run. Running would be ideal. <laughs> that. Whereas in the actual scene where it's the actual actor talking, or at least the actor who filmed it and perhaps is in a sound studio later doing the sound, there's an energy there and there's an intensity and there's an echo, there's an ambience to that. And it's just not found. So I, I don't really like watching. I think it's a cop-out. That's a newbie thing for movie for movie buffs. If you're a movie buff and you insist on listening to dialogue you know, taped over take the training wheels off look at the screen read the words it's enjoyable it's you are brought into the movie in a deeper way in this film it's not terribly distracting to to read and to and to watch what's going on it's well done i enjoyed the I enjoyed the dialogue quality a great deal visual quality uh this film really beautiful there's just some gorgeous this is definitely a film to see on the big screen if you have a yeah, even or, uh, even not the special effects, just the location of where it was filmed is phenomenal. I mean, it's just absolutely unparalleled, really. Uh, really, really strong location setting for this. Yeah. I mean, I would assume that this is what this place looks like in real life anyway, but yeah, it was it was very strong in that regard. Right, it was very beautiful. And so I felt like that was a very strong part of the film as well. The uh, the, the special effects, I don't think that they were overpowering there's an ominous sense about this film because it's taking place at night i don't know if you ever really see the huge wave itself and perhaps that's that's good i know you mentioned in when we did deep water horizon you were kind of disappointed because you never saw the whole right yeah. thing and so yeah. that that to you just detracted i you see the wave come but you don't see the whole wave, I don't believe. But I don't think that detracts. No, you see, excuse me, sorry, you, you do see a good bit in this in, in several different angled shots. I mean, they put some money into the special effects for this thing for sure, or yeah. they just had somebody that was really good, you know, that kind of flew under the radar to be able to, because I mean, yeah, like you, I mean, it's it's gorgeous, and it it's surprising to me that it didn't get more notoriety than what it did. You yeah. know, it's, it's I've had I've had a few a few friends who've watched it, and a couple other friends that I've talked to who have have not even heard of it. And so I our hope would be that uh, this would be one of the reviews that you would come across and see 
that you would enjoy it. We're not giving away a lot of plot spoilers, I don't believe, with this. No, not, no. Not, I, mean, not they, they, I mean, it's it's hard to not give away what the you know the plot of this movie you know is for the most part. We're not doing too much of the the family situations and explanations and all that sort of thing yeah. at all. No, that I think that's. Uh, our right. our fourth aspect here is the uniqueness of the plot. I, as we've as we've mentioned, there's so many disaster epics, so some of which are completely, you know, completely fabricated and live in the the imagination of the scriptwriter. Yeah, as far as as far as comparing it to other films in this genre, I think it is pretty unique in the sense that it doesn't have that cheap knockoff of family issues. The film actually is the opposite of that. It shows, as you said, like the family the family's closeness and the emotional need for them to have each other to be okay uh you know i mean there's as you'll see in the film you know they go they go to great lengths to be able to find each other after this wave has right. has hit um i also think that there were one thing about this film that i really really liked that i don't th don't see as well done in other natural disaster films like this is there's little, another thing that is common in every single natural disaster film like this is there will be small, okay, you'll be, you have this grand stressful situation that's going to happen or is happening, and then it, during that you have these micro stress situations that are created for, you know, thickening the plot, if you will. Uh, in this film it was the situation with the skateboarding son, that doesn't give away too, any much from the plot, right. but you, as you watch the film you'll understand what I'm talking about. <clears throat> also... The woman that gets uh, um, on the on the hike out of that area on the road, and they have to leave the cars. Uh, the girl gets stuck, or she, or the car hits her leg, or something right. along those lines. And those those were a lot in a lot of instances. I feel that those are forced into the film. Um, another film, okay, yeah. Another film that I think you could kind of throw into this genre that did that really bad was Gravity. Uh, Gravity is obviously outside of the Earth, but it's it's a disaster movie. Um, you could almost you could call it a natural disaster film, I guess, in a way. Uh, I'm so sorry. Jesus, <laughs> they're gonna be like, get him off there. <laughs> okay, big hook but comes out. My point, my point, going back to my point though, for that <clears throat> is in Gravity and other films like that. I feel like those those points are forced into the plot. They're forced into the film, like Gravity. I don't care what you say about that movie. There is no f***ing way she's living through all that. You know what I mean? Like, in terms of statistical odds, you know what I mean? Like, there's just no way that it would have... It was just one stress after another. It's like, oh, it can't get any worse. Oh, no, it can't. Okay, it can't get any worse than that. You know, and and they did a good job in this film, though. My point is that this film, they did not feel forced. They felt, like, very natural in the flow of the movie. So, so if you were in charge of writing that script... Would you do everything the same way, except like when she lands, there's an oxygen malfunction and she suffocates, like in the rescue capsule on the ground at the very end? No, I mean I wouldn't. No, I mean like that wasn't the point. I mean, that movie was just a, a pure experimental special effects film anyway. That film didn't have any sort of. Hey, George Clooney. Yeah, but I mean that that's I mean that do you, that, do you, that, need, do you need anything else? <clears throat> yeah, you do. And it, I mean that, that film really really irritated me a lot. I mean all that movie was I had literally it, as I said it was an experimental special effects film. I mean there was nothing they in that They just spent plot. a lot of time doing that film. I think I read. Well, that's what I'm it, saying. It was, it was yeah, that, that, no that's what I'm saying. It's literally that's all that film was was there for was to see you know what they could do, you know how far they could go. I mean, well, give, give me the give me the the juiciness of the, of the plot in that film. I think it was sort of an existential film. She's examining herself. She's, uh, she's in facing, one instance she's facing she's... her immortality. Okay, I think you're proving my point here. Now at this point, you're trying to come up with an argument, but there wasn't a very strong one <laughs> yeah. for that film. It was very bland. It was very. Uh, we're talking about a di different movie here, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to get too far off. But yeah, I mean, Gravity was total. Was total garbage. And ah, no, I don't think it was total garbage. I I enjoyed the film. I actually went to see that with my parents. Oh really? Yeah, and uh, they, they enjoyed they it. Was total garbage. No, they they enjoyed it. Oh. I I like I said it. I have it, to reevaluate my opinion of your parents now, but <laughs> <laughs> they don't really see a lot of films, per se. That said, I think that there was something to be said about the film. I I acknowledge that there are films that are these 
these experimental films. 2012 may have been an experimental film, just to see how much carnage they can do and how many buildings can fall. Into no, these that premises. was that was something totally different. It was just a, a it was a money maker, wasn't it? That was their point. It was it, it was a good timing for that f- style of film? You know, tw- it was literally came out in the year 2012 when the world was supposed to end according to the Aztec calendar. It was just a, that was just a money ploy. All that was. True. I, I I just don't think Gravity was was that awful of a film. I think there are films. I can't can't think of one offhand that are just there for special effects and and lack substance. But in that film, I think that Sandra Bullock does a good job of carrying the film through her expressiveness of her character and the quality of her reaction to what's going on around her it's been a while since i've seen that film so i, I can't really go into go into uh, uh significant detail of it um offhand but i don't i don't remember just being like bored out of my head i think that uh in that i think with lesser actresses than sandra bullock that uh, it could have been that film that could have been the story of that film that movie got 96 on rotten tomatoes that's unreal but but, but i mean she's a She's a capable actor. She's, she's oh yeah, I have nothing against. I mean, I think both and of I them. I think she's capable of being in a situation where she relates and connects with the audience, and that that's 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 the mark of a good actor is that they're in this situation that may or may not be impossible or ridiculous, but they can translate the ethos and experience of that moment to where it's imprinted upon. Didn't feel it at all. Didn't feel it at all. Well. You maybe you need to see a doctor about autism. You're. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, don't, I just. I nothing about that movie was. I just could not believe how more and more and more and more ridiculous if, that movie got. If there had been a sex scene between Bullock and George Clooney, and George Clooney, would you have changed? Would it have been a perfect ten film? If it was a, in a no gravity situation, then yeah, I would. I would. I would have thought it was a ten out of ten probably. But if they were just in you know in a normal space station with gravity still. Employed, I would not have been impressed at all. You weren't ready for that, were you? <laughs> I just, I just think this is is. I, I was, I was being sarcastic when I asked you that, and I think you're, and I, and I acknowledge <laughs> that your your response was also sarcastic. But I, I mean, I legitimately think people would have responded more to. That oh film yeah, I think had, so had too. Had been in there. Oh yeah, that, and that's I what's unfortunate. That. Yeah. I may have mentioned this before. There is a movie. There's a book called uh, "The Alienist" that I really enjoyed by Caleb Carr, that came out probably in the '90s, and he did a, a follow-up sequel to it called "Angel of Darkness." The Alienist is a is a very solid book. Angel of Darkness is good as well, but no, not quite not quite up to the to the to the initial a- Alienist, but. Without going down too far of a distraction, the alienist refers to uh, takes place in the 1900s. That uh, in the early years of psychiatry, to be alienated from oneself was to was to was what madness was was thought of. So if you were mad or suffer from insanity, you were thought to be alienated from yourself. And so people who study this condition were called alienists, and Dr. Keisler is is the central protagonist in this film or in this book. And he is a child alienist, and they're tracking down this this brutal killer of children. It's a very dark film, a very dark book. There have been several attempts to to write a script for it. Caleb Carr has reserved uh, boy not boycott but was it boycott rights or the right to 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 say yay or nay right on, yeah. on on script treatments, and each one that he's been given has tried to write a sex scene into it. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Have I talked about this before? Yeah, you have. Yeah. And I think you've done it in another video as well, actually. So you might be. Well, I, I believe I did. I can't remember which one. Yeah. But I, but I, but I believe that point stands still, that they keep trying to make a sex scene in that. Right. Yeah. And he says no. The film carries its own weight, or the the film should carry its own weight. Right. I think that in Gravity. The interaction between those characters is one of friendship and respect and an existential quality, and it never goes into the sexual. If there are any sexual references in there, I don't remember what they were. But I, I think there's, I think there should be creative space for films like that. I believe that to just have characters having sex, 
And I think wasn't there was there a, a, a insinuated sex scene in Passengers? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, yeah. you know, they had to put that in there. Um, there's not in this film either. And there's, though. And there's no, that's that's also true, which is sometimes something sometimes could be potentially unusual. A lot of foreign films don't, especially French. They just they don't. Yeah, they, they, don't, they, hold they don't have hold the bars, same. Yeah. They're not. They're not as uh, bashful about that as American audiences are per se. But I, I think Gravity was I think Gravity was a good film, and I th- and I think that it carried itself based on, like, again to use another film, uh, with Tom Hanks in Castaway, just one actor in that in that case who's carrying the entire film based on his own capacity as an actor, and I think I think if you were to go back and watch Gravity again, I'd argue that you'd see see Bullock as carrying a lot of weight in that film and moving the plot along. And and transferring the energy of that situation into the audience watching watching the film, and to to resolve that back to this film, I believe these actors. Our last one here is acting skill. Yeah, they are also absorbing the energy in that situation, and 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 delivering that in this film to you as an audience member, as a person watching the film. You sense the dread. You sense the the deep frustration while she's looking for her son in that hotel as the as she's looking at her watch, and the and the seconds are cl- are ticking by before this this wave is going to come, which is almost certain death. Right. Yeah. You sense the that deep frustration of a mother. You see the people around who risk their own lives to try to help. Uh, these people themselves and so they get involved as well and you sense uh, there's one scene which I'll which I'll talk about when they're in the when they're trapped in a room that they've gone into it's the bomb shelter the water's rising and you really sense you see the fear and the irrationality of that yeah. man who initially joined them to try to save their help help save their lives and now he's endangering them because he's he's totally yeah, lost his lost own mind. lost his own mind, and this this does happen in drowning situations where people uh, they just dis- sorry and this does happen in drowning situations where people will lose contact with reality and they to to fight to get to the surface they'll grab you yeah. and push you down and drown you so that they themselves can get oxygen and can get to the surface this that actually happened a number of years ago with a group of people that i was with we went uh they were all out on the they were all out swimming and uh one of the fellows in the group panicked and and was pushing down another member of the group and and drowning them you know in the process of drowning himself and there just happened to be a fellow on the shore who jumped in and separated them and I, there's no doubt in my mind that that gentleman hadn't been there that day, a complete stranger, they both would have drowned. And so I, I, I think about that when I see a film like this, and that that connects with me because I see, in that case, the well, I won't I won't give away how that how that film is. But another film, did we we I think we may have talked about the abyss. There, mm-hmm. There's a very famous drowning scene in Stop that film. Mm-hmm. Probably, probably one of my favorite Ed Harris scenes is when he is um, uh, standing over his wife, who are separated Clear. from, and he, you see the intensity of the emotion in that scene, where he's slapping her, trying to get her. Yeah. yeah. This is, you know, he's some, he says something like. You goddamn bitch! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've never walked away from a single fight in your life, you know. And I just the intensity yeah, yeah. of that of, of that scene is just electrifying. It's one it's one of those it's one of those scenes that that stand out to me of of, of actors who are just really plugging in with with full intensity into a scene. And showing what you can experience 
as an audience member and, and it, finally crafted the film. That was a great film, by the way, though at the very end, I think with the alien bit, it just it ju- totally jumped the shark for me. I was like, I enjoyed that whole film, and then at the very end, I was like, oh, come on. Really? But anyway, I don't think this film ever does that. It no. maintains... Well, there's, there's two a, different genres of film here. Yeah, of course. Of but it, it, this film maintains a good narrative arc, and I don't think it overplays anything. And again, this film is about a new... <clears throat> this film is about an event that will likely take place, possibly within our lifetimes. And everything that within this film... I mean, there's, there's, there's maybe a little bit of... I don't know if they would actually be able to survive in the way that they do survive in the in the hotel. Yeah. That may be a little stretch, Well, even remember, but... even the, the vehicle, they were in a... The guy was in a... He gets hit by that, you know. Yeah, he's, that, he's, that might have been a little bit of Hollywood. Yeah. But this will happen. This will take place. And... I really want to say... <laughs> uh, uh, this will take place... And I, I think it's an enjoyable film. I it hit all the it hit all these aspects of pace, dialogue quality, visual quality, visual quality, uniqueness, and acting skill. It hit the, hit all those for me. And as a geology uh, geek, I enjoy the science behind yeah, it as well. Yeah. yeah, it's very well put together in that regard. And and I really did also enjoy the 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 emotion of those scientists. That are, that's portrayed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was very enjoyable. Whenever they realized the gravity of what was happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they were washed away. Yeah, they were they were they were just plunged into the abyss. Yeah. Of of passion and frustration. Can, anything can, else? Can we go? Can we go farther with that? I don't know. I don't think I got any <laughs> anything else for it. So I'm gonna give this film. I'm gonna give this film an eight. I'll give this one a seven. Not my cup of tea in terms of uh, um, genre, but I did really enjoy it. It was very solid. This is what I would want out of a film like that if I was going to watch one. Not some cheap Liv Tyler, Josh Hartnett, or I'm sorry, Ben Affleck, excuse me, (laughs) garbage. uh, That was in Armageddon or, like we said, uh, 2012. Very strong uh, for what it is, and uh, I hope to see more from this company as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm always encouraged to see other voices contributing. And, of course, this is this is a whole aspect of foreign film that a lot of people, unfortunately, just don't really bother to explore right. and see. There's, there's a lot of good stuff that's out there. There's some trash, but there's a lot of good stuff out there. If you want to... If you're a person that likes to experiment with stuff like myself, uh, Audition is an extremely good Japanese horror film that was ground shaking in 2004 um hey, my bad. Baskin is a Hungarian horror film that actually is streaming on Netflix right now it's one of the best movies I've seen probably in the last year or two extremely existential extremely metaphoric extremely symbolic a really strong film uh gotta be in the right mindset to watch it it's gotta pay a lot of close attention and stuff but it's one of the best foreign films I've ever seen as well so, other films that I would recommend uh, that are Scandinavian. <laughs> They're Scandinavian. You want me to edit that out? No, you got it. You got okay. it. No, that's good. That's good. That's okay. fine. I I I uh, dug my own grave there, and I deserve that. All right. Okay. Other films that I would recommend are, I've already mentioned uh, the uh, the the vampire, the very unique vampire story. Uh, Let the right one in. Which was remade uh, into Let Let Me In, I think, uh, which was also very scary, but not not nearly to the same quality of uh, Let Me In. Right. Also mentioned the girl with the dragon tattoo. That film, a lot of sexual violence. That said, there's an essence to that film that I believe uh, I don't want to say justifies it, but uh, there's an actual actualization that you realize. And I know that I've also mentioned this before, that the writer of that, uh, those, those books, um, he is now deceased, that he, in his teenage years, witnessed a rape outside his door of a, of a neighbor who was also a friend. 
and he, he basically turned the other way and walked away. He was racked with guilt and came back to that person and asked for it and asked to apologize for doing the thing. They would not accept his apology because they were, they were brutally violated and just, just, you know, they were raped. They were raped with all the horror, trauma, de degradation, degrading uh, grotesqueness to be experienced in that moment by someone. And she did not accept his apology. You did not do anything. And he was racked with guilt. And that sort of served as the muse, as it were, for him to write that because it features this central character, uh, Elizabeth Slander, played by uh, Numi Rapace, uh, an up and up and coming star who basically got her traction in that film. Has featured in I think one of the James Bond films I believe. Yeah, is that new? As, as well Skyfall as or whatever. Skyfall. <clears throat> as well as in a couple of different films, um, the new Alien franchise, yeah. uh, Prometheus as well. Yeah, yeah. But she got her start in that film. And I think I think the film the the picture of her standing in front of the burning car was like my desktop on my computer for oh, the yeah, longest yeah. time. Anyway, very very powerful film series, and that actor uh, actually who is in that film actually passed away I think well, last month. Can't think of his name offhand. Also a very good capable very capable uh, actor as well. But. These these are good films, and you know they're good when American uh, film yeah, studios are trying to copy them as they did with uh, yeah. both of those films. Yeah. Be interesting to see if they would try to reproduce this. Not sure if they'd really be able to. Don't know if there's any uh, American towns sort of under the same right, threat. Right. Yeah. But um, it was only a matter of time. On that same note, Matthew was talking about too. Uh, horror genre is really strong in Scandinavia uh, as well. Um, I mean, obviously the one Matthew said is a horror film, but uh, Troll Hunter, which is like a bit of a cult classic, you need to watch at some point during your time. Dead frame. Snow too, right? Yeah, Dead Snow as well is that's the other one I was gonna bring up. Was a really a really I mean it's it's a bit honky, uh, a bit parody esque in a way. I mean, it's a movie about dead Nazi zombies. You know, I mean that's a bit <laughs> far fetched, but it's actually like a quality film. Though, I have a right? documentary of this right up here. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's a good, it's a, it, it's a well put together film, and Troll Hunter is like probably, in my opinion, the best film that's ever come out of Scandinavia. I might even put it above the, above what the right one is. Maybe we could do a review of that if you want to, man. You'll actually really like that movie. But um, anyway, I mean, I on that same note, I think that's that might be the, one of the best, if not the best, found footage film that's ever been made too. But um, you're very partial to those, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm actually very, I actually hate them. Uh, I. We're gonna do a special episode where we have somebody like walking Jesus. around with. The, yeah, I just uh, think camera. that that's like. I mean, it's it's super overly it's super overdone. There's no creativity in it anymore. Uh, I think Troll Hunter was an exception to that in the sense that it was, it has fantasy elements to it, which I thought was really interesting. But I mean, like you know, there's been a hand. I mean, there's been a million films like that, and there's only been a handful of them that have been effective. You know, Blair Witch Project, Quarantine. I thought was quite effective. Uh, Cloverfield. I did not think was. Which everybody seems to think to go to that for found footage films. Uh, the, the new Blair Witch was absolutely garbage. Uh, but yeah, um, Scandinavia is doing good things in the horror field, which is all I really care about, honestly. But at least you're honest. Yeah. <laughs> so I believe that probably wraps us up here. Mm -hmm. For yeah. uh, so you gave it a seven, I give seven. it an eight. We hope that you do look for it. It's probably somewhere in the foreign language section of your yeah, music especially store. as this is this is this category is a very popular mainstream yeah. category for most people as well. So definitely check this out if this is like in your sort of th in your up your alley because this would be a film that you would definitely want to add to your collection if you yeah. uh, like this sort of thing. It's, if you have a foreign language film, it should be this one or a natural disaster thing. If that's sort of your genre as well, that's exactly. sort of action national disaster thing. This is definitely mandatory for your library. Probably the best natural disaster that I've watched so far. It's close for that for me. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think of what I liked. Vertical Limit, but I, that's a little bit of an action film in its own right, as well as well as a natural disaster film. And that one was late '90s, I guess, maybe early 2000s. But it was a like K2 sort of situation. People but on you're a never going to admit that 2012 has a special place in your heart. Uh, 2012 can go. You can you can blink that out. I <laughs> hated that movie. Hated that movie, man. Why'd you see it three times then? I did not. <laughs> 
I didn't. I saw it drunk once in theaters, and I couldn't even stand it. And while the, I was drunk. the second time was with the girl who wanted to go on the date. She <laughs> no, wanted to see no, that, no, right? No, I only saw it and once. The third time was only saw it once. <laughs> only saw it once. And hated every minute of it. For it to be as long as it was, I, too. I like I like John Cusack. He, he oh, I like John yeah, Cusack, he, but he, he, I don't think he should have been the main character in that film. It didn't fit him. We should go back and do some of his really old films. Maybe a Better Off Dead. Identity, high that fidelity. Yeah, identity is classic. Yeah. It's a good film. That's a good anyway, film. that let's we're we're wrapping up here. We're gonna go off on a forty-five minute tangent here. We keep talking about John Cusack. So, anyway, all right. We are so grateful that you joined us. Please check out our other reviews and leave us feedback. And if you have a recommendation, something you'd like to see us review, let us know. Or if you have aspects of other films that you think we're leaving out, these are conversational movie reviews. So we're trying to dig down into them and. Talk about them a little bit more than what, like a five-minute YouTube. It's your typical five-minute, you know, high-intensity jumping around movie review. That's not what we're doing here. So we're doing something very different, and uh, we know it's not for everybody. Uh, and if you're a fan of us, that means that you probably love movies and that you actually like us. You probably think a little bit deeper of them on a deeper level. So we're glad you were here, and we appreciate your time. Have a great day. I'm Matthew Lipscomb. And I'm Ryan Beckner. And this is Beckner and Lipscomb at the Movies. Have a good one. Bye-bye.